Cop Out is now playing at Pullman Village Center Cinemas. So a lot of critics are saying that this movie is really similar to the 80s uh, and early 90s hit trilogy Beverly Hills Cop, and I totally agree with that. The soundtrack is written by the same guy, Harold Faltermeyer, who also, he, he made a pretty believable 80s type buddy cop comedy feel. And I think the best part about this movie were the supporting roles. Adam Brody and Kevin Polak play NYPD cops, and they're really comparable to Judge Reinhold and Judge John Aston as, or Ashton as the characters in Beverly Hills Cop. Also, Sean William Scott was absolutely hilarious. Um, I think that this movie is best to rent, so I say a must for DVD rental. What do you think? Exactly what you'd expect from a buddy cop comedy. Director Kevin Smith, I definitely think, could have be done a better job. Um, we all love Bruce Willis, but this was not his best film choice. I didn't hate it, but it could have been better. And like Kira said, I feel like it was a follow-up to Beverly Hills Cop, but failed to do what it was supposed to. Also, it was definitely the supporting roles that made it for me. So I'd say some laughs, but it's a bust. Looking for a break from midterms this weekend? Eric and Lauren will help you decide which DVD you should rent to ease your mind. Hey, Eric here. Soccer is my favorite thing in the world right after movies. And this week, the DVD I reviewed is about England's greatest soccer coach. The Damned United is about Brian Clough, played by Michael Sheen and his undeniable skill in taking teams from the bottom division and making them champions. This true story begins with Klopp being given the manager's job of Leeds United, the number one team in the English league. It immediately jumps back six years to his career with Derby United, who are at the bottom of the third division, and tells the story of how he got them to the top spot in the first division. Klopp's drive for success ultimately destroys the relationship with his best friend and assistant coach, Peter Taylor, played by Timothy Spall. The DVD is 98 minutes and is rated R for language. Half the swear words are British and don't really count. The special features include commentary with the director, the making of The Damned United, and a look at soccer in the 70s. This is a great historical soccer movie that looks at the struggles of, and pressures of being a manager. For all you soccer fans, this is a must-see. So Lauren, what did you review this week? Well, Eric, I'd love to inform you. Hey everyone, it's Lauren. From the director who brought you Ocean's 11, 12, and 13, Steven Soderbergh is at it again with his new DVD release of The Informant. Starring Matt Damon, this dark political comedy was an adaptation from a nonfiction book written by Kurt Eckewald in the year 2000. In the movie, Damon portrays a bipolar whistleblower who, in the 90s, blew the whistle on the company price fixing tactics. Released in September of 2009, The Informant is now on DVD with many mixed reviews. It's very much a love-hate relationship, and the relationship I had with the movie was definitely a love. What made the movie was definitely Damon and his portrayal of the character. His acting fit the role and made the movie complete, very much like the jittery, nervous character we are all fond of from the Ocean series. The DVD also comes with additional scenes. The Informant is now out for you to own. Back to you, ladies. So with all the Olympic coverage going on TV right now, we've been missing what's going on in entertainment. Let's hear what Brittany has for us. Hey guys, it's Brittany again here for your entertainment news report. On February 16th, Walter Koenig, father of the 41-year-old Growing Pain star Andrew Koenig, received a suspicious letter from his son. Knowing their son was vacationing in Vancouver, they became extremely concerned of his whereabouts. They sent out three authorized search and warrant teams along with 11 close family and friends to search for their missing son. It was not until Tuesday the 23rd that Koenig's body was found hanging from a tree in Vancouver's Stanley Park. Andrew's parents reported that there was no trauma, no episode, and no drug use involved with this tragedy and will never know the reason for their son's suicide. Further investigation is taking place. The 47-year-old actor Jim Carrey is excited to say that his baby is having a baby. On Friday, February 26, at 12.28 a.m., Carrie's daughter, Jane, and her husband, Alex, welcomed their 7-pound, 11-ounce baby boy, Jackson Riley Santana. Congrats to the new addition of the Carrie family. And that's all for this week's entertainment news. Great update, Brittany. From Hollywood, ho Hollywood to horror, let's see what movies Pearl and Dove chose for their list of top five horror flicks. Hey, movie watchers. We are back and ready to bring you another exciting edition of The Pearl Dove Show! I'm Alex Pearl, by the way. And I'm William Dove. This week, for some reason, we are bringing you our top five horror movies, which I hate because I'm a little girl. It's true, he is a girl. 
Coming in at number five, we have Alien. It's a story that takes place in the future. In space, a couple of space miners have a tough run-in with a face-grabbing alien. They think they took care of it, but they are dead wrong. The crew is taken out one by, <laughs> by an alien that no one has ever suspected, and it grows and grows, the suspense grows until it explodes. This movie is scary and spacey. Scariest part is Sigourney Weaver in her undies. That's absolutely horrifying. Coming in at number four, we have The Shining. I have nothing funny to say about this movie. Jack Nicholson goes crazy. You've probably seen it, and if you haven't, I wouldn't recommend it. It's scary. I'm already scared, William. Ah. Okay, number three is a movie, and I don't want to talk about it. The movie is called It. It's actually called It. And It scarred me forever as a child. It stars a murderous clown, and It is solely responsible for my mental phobias of clowns. Don't show your kids It unless you want them to have a huge fear of clowns. Don't watch It. Number two on our horror list is a movie that I actually enjoyed and was not disturbed physically or emotionally by. However, it is still scary. It's called The Thing and will be playing at the Cub in a couple weeks. Deep within the Arctic Circle, scientists find a shape-shifting life form that takes residence in other living things. The suspense grows as one by one the crew is overtaken and leaves you on the edge of your beanbag chair. This thing is pretty darn freaky and has some of the most crazy puppeteering stuff you'll ever see in a movie. Don't mess with this thing. I will not mess with your thing, William. Number one, the scariest movie is The Exorcist. The story of a teenage girl that gets possessed by the biggest bad guy ever known to mankind, the devil. They have to use church stuff to try and save her. This movie will freak you out and make your head spin. That was a horrifying show, Alex. Now let us never speak of this again. Back to you, ladies. That's it for this week. Catch us next week for our last episode before, before spring break. We will be reviewing Alice in Wonderland. Stay tuned to Cable 8, Channel 8 for more episodes here on Always on the Movie. I'm so, so, so long. I'm about to so sexy. I can handle it. No.